Hi everyone and welcome along to the latest instalment of This Racing Life, coming to you from Shade Oak Stud here in the heart of Shropshire. It's home to established stallions such as Scorpion, but also exciting new ones, the likes of Telescope and Dartmouth. Later on in the show, we'll be visiting Borton on the Water, Christina McKelleny uh, paying a visit to Ben Pauling ahead of Cheltenham and Aintree, and also pays a visit to the point to point team of Gina and Tom Ellis. But first, it's Shade Oak Stud to find out a little bit more. I'd love to know that it's a beautiful place, but how did this, this area and this, this particular place become a stud farm in the beginning? Uh, well, originally we were a dairy farm. Uh, it was a very, it's a very much a dairy area around here. Good grass growing area. And, uh, and then Foot and Mouth came along in the late 60s. We were one of the last places to go down and that sort of triggered uh, a sort of change in direction thereafter. I wasn't really interested in cows, and um, so we evolved. Uh, we thought we'd give it a go and start start with the horses. There was a lot of hard work. Um, it wasn't easy. We had no history as a stud, so attracting those early owners was difficult. We got better stallions. Um, better stallions attracted better mares. But it, it took a long time to, to get established in those days. And there have been a lot of enjoyable moments in it. Um, certainly, I never get fed up of, of, of breeding racehorses. You know, every year, no matter how hard it is the previous year, and you do need to recharge your batteries, you can't wait to the next foal arise. Then it starts all over again. And yes, I still look forward to that every year. With a couple of, we've got a couple of foals just over your, over your left shoulder and we saw one of the barns which is, is, there's plenty of them and I suppose at this stage you just look out there and do you see it as a bit of a field of dreams so to speak? Oh constantly, if, if, if you don't dream you're in, <laughs> without dreaming you wouldn't do this, you know, it's all about the dreams, it's all about uh, what potentially could be, could it be the next one out, you know, um, just breeding, could you possibly breed a Cheltenham winner? You know, um, that side of it is, is uh, unlimiting in, in the fact that it doesn't matter what mare you have, you know, it, it doesn't have to be the best bred mare, it doesn't have to be the best runner itself. Th there are loads of examples of people starting from very low, low base and, and achieving greatness. Back towards the house, there's, there's a wall. Um, it's rather a wall of fame, isn't it, for, for here at Shade Oak, the, the stallions that have been here there are some fantastic names there. Which really stand out for you when you look back? There's two stallions really that, that built Shade Oak. Uh, Gunner B was the first. Um, he, we brought him as a, as a, as a, uh, a stopgat, something just to fill in. Um, he was 16 years old and the year that we bought him uh, he had the champion hurdle winner Royal Gate. And, uh, he started the stud into, into a different um, era. Um, he opened more opportunities, more mares came, uh, and he accelerated the stud forward. And on the basis of him, we then went out and, and um, we bought our flora. Um, between the two of them, I think, um, they became leading British sire countless times, I think seven or eight times mm. uh, between them. Uh, and they, they thrust Shade Oak forward sort of more into the limelight and established it. Do you feel their legacy as much now as, as when you look back at it? Did they, did they rather build something that's here in 2020? Oh yeah, they're, they're responsible for everything. They're, they drove my enthusiasm. And they opened me up to, 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 to what could be achieved. Um, and now, even now, it still hasn't stopped because the base of the stud is built around Al Flora Mares mm. and, and he's long departed but we still have his legacy still going strong now. The likes of Telescope, the likes of Dartmouth, young horses, young stallions, very very good flat horses who, are they the horses that are, that are going to go into this new decade, the stallions that are going to take Shade Oak Stud into, into the next decade and beyond do you think? Well I hope so. Uh, um, certainly um, when we went out and bought Telescope uh, it was one of those moments when you think, oh, do I want to go again? It was, you know, do I want to invest all the time and the years in trying to sort of um, d 
develop a stallion and, and ultimately I, I do it f for the opportunity of, of having a leading sire. So, so it, I'm not really interested into taking a stallion for a few years and then passing it on and, and then taking another one and, and, and rotate them. That's not what uh, excites me. What, what drives me personally is trying to get another leading sire. When we took on Telescope, um, I could feel myself getting excited again. Because it's not just the investment in the here and now, it is, as you said, this, this could be something that goes on and on and on for, for upwards of, of a, well, a decade plus, seemingly. Oh, it could be, absolutely. And uh, certainly when we, we followed that after Telescope with Dartmouth, um, you know, I, I felt, blimey, another one. That's another 10 years on. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you could say I'm, I'm looking to perhaps my son coming home or something like that because I can feel the energy levels are, are depleting. Um, but I'm still excited about it. More from Shade Oak later, but now over to Borton on the Water, where Ben Pauling looks to the spring festivals, having seen his team turn a corner on a previously quiet season at just the right time. So Ben, it's been much said about you had a slower start to the season than, than you're used to. At what point did you realise that things weren't going quite how you, you wanted and how did you react to that? Well, it, was, it was very apparent quite early on, sort of early November, that things weren't quite right. So we gave them plenty of time then to come to come back to themselves and it resulted in quite a good Christmas period and it was, you know, testament to our owners and all the rest of it. It's been, yeah, it's been a tough year and so far, but hopefully it's starting to pick up slightly now. So going into those spring festivals this year, having had your first winner at Cheltenham Willoughby Court, last year you followed that up with Le Broy and the National Hunt Chase. How does the second win at the festival compare to the first? It's brilliant. I mean, it's just as good. Um, we loved every second of, of, of both of them. Um, both very different races um, and, and different types of horses. But, um, you know, it's, it's a very special thing and it's what we all aim to do. And, uh, you know, having a, having a winner at any festival, but in particular Cheltenham, really does, you know, put the icing on the cake for the season, really. Jamie was brilliant on him um, that day at Cheltenham. Um, as he is on very many horses, but um, you know, he, he's he, he's a sort of an economical jumper. So mm. he just he's very accurate, but just gets from A to B without being too flamboyant. And I think that's what you need for these sort of staying races. So once you've won a race of that nature, obviously people start to talk about the Grand National. And when he ran in the Beecher, he seemed to take to that different style of fence really well. Yeah, no, he couldn't have jumped round there any better. Um, we were absolutely thrilled. Um, he ran very well to finish seventh. The horses at the time weren't 100%, mm. and crossing the Melling Road, he looked the winner, yeah. um, but probably just got a little tired over the last two, but then continued to stay on again. Mm. But um, yeah, the National's very much the target now, and we're looking forward to it. And recently we've had the, the weights unveiled <coughs> for the National. What's your, uh, re your reaction to where he stands in that at the moment? Well, I mean, he's going to be, I think, with a, with a bit of... With the wind behind us, he probably just about nick a run. It, it'll be close. I mean, there's six of them on 145, so depending on what happens between now um, and just before the national, if horses run and run well, then they'll obviously go to the top of that pile. Um, so he could be 66th in, um, or he could be 72nd. Obviously, 66th would would, would get in, um, and 72nd would be on the on on the dodgy side. But mm. you know these. These sort of things are sent to try us. I mean, the only reason he's in this position is because he was very unfortunate at the start of the classic chase at Warwick. Mm. Um, there was a standing start, and I still to this day have no idea why they were recalled because there was, you know, a big field. They were hardly charging the tape. There was not a lot wrong. Everyone was going the right, same direction, and we like to be handy with him. Um, but. Unfortunately, they did recall us. It was a standing start and he was in the middle, got pincered and ended up stone last and just didn't travel and jump like he normally can because he just right. wasn't happy where he was. Um, but finished with an absolute wet sail and um, <coughs> was a very fast finishing fifth and, you know, got drop three, which I thought was quite extraordinary. I thought mm. maybe 
one or two, considering the way the race worked out. But um, he has been dropped the three. He's on to one four five. Look, if he gets in, he's going to have a fabulous chance. I think. Mm. Um, I do think he's tailor made for the race. But um, he, you know, he might well run between now and then, depending on what we think um, closer to the time. But um, he's in great order. The Nationals been the aim all season, and fingers crossed we'll we'll get we'll get in, and it'll be a very exciting run. So, what's he like as a horse to deal with and train? Labrule, he's he's his own man. He's his own character. He's um, yeah, he's he's not the most sort of social of horses. Um, if you or I walked into his box right now, he'd probably go to the back of his box. You know, he's not exactly a horse that loves a bit of fuss. Um, right. Hannah Worgan, who looks after him and adores him. She can do anything with him, um, but he's a very genuine horse. You know, he, he, he loves his work. Um, actually, as he gets older, he's more enthusiastic in his work. Um, and, um, you know, he's, he's a real joy to train now. He's a very sound horse these days. And, mm. you know, it's, um, it's been an exciting, exciting road with him, but he's, he's, a, he's a very nice horse to have anything to do with, really. Just to go to Kildasar, you mentioned <coughs> he's uh, he's higher up in the weights <coughs> than Leroy for the race. Um, had a great season last year. Yeah, really good. Great free winner entry. Yeah, no, Kildasar was fabulous last year, and um, coming out this season, he actually ran really nice first time up, and then got stuck in the mud there at Ascot, um, and he's dropped a dropped a couple of pounds in the weights, um, and so hopefully he's he's a horse now that can. He's, he seems to be very good in the spring right. and so hopefully now going forward he can get his season really back on track and, and start start to um, make giant strides forward again. Well, you mentioned the going, I was going to ask about him, I mean we've had extremes of weather this year mm. and, and what has been heavy in previous seasons is it's been nothing like what we've seen on some courses this year. Has, has his slightly quieter year this year been much to do with that do you think? Yeah he just, he can handle nearly anything but the ground he's been running on has been desperate mm. and we've sort of had to take our chances because we missed some early targets because of the quiet yard syndrome as it were and you know we've we, we definitely had to run him in conditions he wouldn't love and and he really hasn't loved he's a he's a big strong horse but he's just he, he loves a bit of better ground and you know I, I firmly believe the way he's working at the moment he'll he'll be seen to come back to somewhere near his best very soon. And you mentioned his mark, I mean he has, in a fairly short time he's come down quite a bit for a horse who's clearly very high calibre when mm. things are, are in his favour, so where does that leave you regards thoughts on Cheltenham and the National? Um, well he'll probably look, um, he might even run at Kempton uh, a week Saturday um, and then we've got him in the Ultima and then the National as well. I mean he I think his owners would be very keen to run in the national. Mm. Um, I think he's uh, very nicely weighted um, now to go and, and run well in an Ultima, mm. which he which he will be entered in. Um, so yeah, he's 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 a horse the right side of the handicap, I'd I'd say now. Um, but through no reason other than the grounds being completely against him. So mm. yeah, if he can return to the form of last year, then he should go very well. And heading your team for Cheltenham has got to be Global Citizen, who, not that there's any doubt about his ability over hurdles, he may have run below his best in the champion hurdle, but every horse can have an off day. But at Kempton, mm. he showed that he possesses the same sort of talent over fences. Yeah, no, he, um, he's, he was really good at Kempton. Um, he was up, rated at near 160 odd before he went to the champion hurdle. and. I always thought if he could replicate anywhere near that form in novice chases, then he's going to be a sort of one to one to watch. Mm. Um, obviously disappointed at Carlisle, but thrilled um, at Kempton. He jumped and travelled superbly well that day, and and going forward now we'll go straight to the Arkle. He's a horse that's best fresh. Mm. He he'd had a very hard season by the time we got to Cheltenham last year, and he just wasn't he wasn't full of himself, and he wasn't at all what he could be he didn't even travel to the first hurdle so you can draw a line through that but um you know the form's been franked um mm. as well by the harry whittington horse that won mm. at warwick there last weekend so yeah we're going there with um 
high expectations of, of a really exciting and good run. And like you say, he, he disappointed at Carlisle and that's led some people to question his suitability for the sort of course that you're going to be dealing with at yeah. Cheltenham. Do you find that there's any truth in that at all? You have to, you have to sort of understand where people are coming from. Sure. But I, as his trainer, know that he's never run on an undulating course when he's been 100%. Right. You know, he did, he did finish um, fourth in the handicap at Ascot at the beginning of last season um, when he pulled a little bit of a muscle in his back, so he hung up the home straight. But you know, he didn't. He handled Ascot perfectly well, and mm. Ascot's not not flat. Um, but Cheltenham is a track unlike any other. You know, it's it's up and it's down. It's it's constantly on the turn. So you do need a type of ho a certain type of horse to to, to cope with it. Mm. Um, and although I wouldn't be saying it's a certainty he will, I don't think he's had the opportunity to to prove whether he can or can't um, in the form that he'll be in going there. Of the novice chase division, other horses going there, are there any in particular that you would be wary of? I mean, the Irish, the Irish horses of Notebook and Fakadé du Derry would probably mm. be the the two standouts at the moment. Um, of the English, I mean, when he's got to be up there with the best of them. Mm. You know, that performance at, at Kempton was pretty much the best of the English. You've got the nice horse of. Um, Evan Williams is um, probably as well in there, but apart from that, I think he'll. Yeah, I think I think if it was just an English arc, I'd be very confident, and uh, I do think that we can hopefully give the Irish something to think about as well. Back at Shade Oak, we were fortunate to be shown the current crop of National Hunt stallions standing here. So this is the the 2005 St Ledger winner, a very classy horse for for Aidan O'Brien. This is Scorpion. How long has he been here with you? Been here four years. Um, he came from Coolmore. Um, and uh, I think we're very lucky to have him. He's, um, he's owned by Trevor Hemmings. Um, so, you know, a good patron of the National Hunt Sport. Um, and yeah, I, th I think he's the only son of Monjour over here, uh, the sire of Mike Vite. Um, bit of a character. The most perfect timing for that as well, wasn't it? Sire of Mike Bite as he as he goes in, but as you quite rightly said, it's just a greeting from him. Oh, it is, yeah. He, he, he uh, likes to think he's in charge of everything. And how many in, in the in the years that you've had him here? What four years or so? Um, how busy has he been? What's what's the future look like for Scorpion? His future has really been mapped out by what he's covered in in Cornwall, you know, uh, um, and what he has on the track, uh, and so. Um, Mike Bite obviously gave him a, a huge impulse, uh, in, um, the uplift. Yeah. And uh, I would say at the moment people are waiting to see if there's another one, <laughs> another one coming along shortly. You know, every time you say Mike Bite, that is exactly what he does. <laughs> and just with the, there is obviously the, the, oh, that horse is a scorpion, a son of scorpion. And we know what Mike Bite has done. He's obviously got the brilliance, but he's, he's had that little bit of a way with nature as well. Is it, is it knowing him, do you think it's justified? It's not. Not in the way people perceive it, you know. Um, Scorpion likes to be reassured. He likes to be told everything's okay in the world. He likes to be, um, he likes to be stroked and petted. And certainly the stallion man, Yuri, who looks after him every day, he, he worships Yuri. He, he'll go anywhere that Yuri takes him. Um, he's the calmest stallion in the paddock. He grazes all day. Yeah. You know, he's not a lunatic that runs around. That, those, those, all that sort of thing is completely wrong. It's, it's about reassurance. It's, it's about being told things that, okay, um, and, and that's him. This is, this is Telescope, who is only, well, he's only a 10-year-old now. He was a brilliant racehorse. Of course, we're at Royal Ascot, the Hardwick Stakes, trained by Sir Michael Stout, one we all remember. And this is him now. Um, how exciting do you think this could be as a National Hunt Stallion? Uh, I, I, we've laid the best foundation in terms of the amount of mares we've covered, the quality of mares we've covered. He's by a super sire Galileo. He's an incredible racehorse. He has all the attributes that we feel uh, you acquire with a great foundation laid down um, by a, a lot of people supporting him uh, from British breeders. Uh, we think he has the, probably the best chance of any sire we've ever, ever launched here.
Is that quite high praise from you at this early stage? Would you normally get that excited? Uh, it's, it's very difficult. Um, you know, you, you expect breeders to look at the stallion and see what you're seeing. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't have bought him if I didn't believe he had all the credentials to do it. But you're asking them to take a leap of faith with a young horse. And um, obviously, a lot of people have seen the same things I've seen. So, you know, we hope he maintains that. We hope he, it, it carries on through. Uh, we've got some difficult years to go because we, we're in that sort of interview period before yeah. he's actually got runners. Um, they are very photogenic, his offspring, and they have this really good walk to them, which has managed to drive the sales market, which has pushed him into what you call a fashionable sire, which is, which is a great position to be in. And he hasn't even got a runner. Well, well he actually has a runner. He's, he's had a couple of two runners on the flat. So, yeah. and they're promising. We've seen a, a very, very heavily in foal Leperatine being led up and down. She's due seemingly any time now. Now she's already produced a certain gold cup winner in, in sizing. John, is that, is that the quality of the mares that we're talking about that have gone to telescope so far? Well, you'd love to have them all of that quality, but yes, he's been very fortunate on the elite mare scheme. Uh, I think he's had over a hundred elite mares. Um, obviously, they're not all of the quality of, 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 of Peritine, La Peritine. I mean, she's done it. Uh, Amaretta Rose has been to him as well, yeah. another class mare. Um, yeah, he's been very fortunate that, that scheme's come in, which has is, is helped him lay this foundation. And this is, this is the youngest stallion here at Shade Oak Stud. This is Dartmouth, who raced in the Royal Colours, of course, by yeah. Dubowie. He's only eight. Did I read somewhere that you'd identified him as a potential stallion 18 months before you actually acquired him? Identifying a stallion is one thing, and you've also got to identify a possibility of being able to purchase him. And uh, I, I, we felt at the time that it's owned by Her Majesty. It was gifted to Her Majesty. And we rather hoped that Her Majesty wouldn't sell a gift. And that gave us a possibility that she might like to stand it here. And that was the, the tenuous thread that we were, we were hoping, and it came off. Um, it did help that John, we've been to see John Warren, obviously, with Telescope. And, and John Warren advises, obviously, for the Queen. Um, but that, that was the thread we were hoping for. I'm very lucky to get him. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the qualities that he, he exhibited on the race course, he won a Hardwick, like Telescope, but he also won a Yorkshire Cup at a mile six. He won at a mile two. Was it, was it everything you wanted as a, as a potential National Hunt stallion? The qualities you need for a national hunt, they've, they've got to be tough. You know, we're asking you to go for endless amounts of miles, jump loads of fences. It, it, it's, and certainly uh, when we saw him race in the Hardwick States, he had no right to beat Harlan Reel. Yeah. And uh, it was his sheer determination and courage that got him through. Yeah, that did attract me to him. He's become the horse I dreamt he would. Uh, but more importantly, he's throwing the sort of things I love to see. While in the Midlands, Christina also visited G&T Racing, also known as Gina and Tom Ellis, one of the most successful young partnerships in point-to-point -point racing at their base near Coventry. So Tom, you're one half of what's become G&T Racing, a name of which I thoroughly approve. We're here at Heath Barn. When did you come here? Uh, we moved here five years ago when we got married, so um, yeah, settled in well. Done lots of work up here, so where we are now anyway. What was here when you actually first started? Uh, a house and three wooden stables, so... Slightly um, different now then? <laughs> yeah, very different now, yeah. So we started out with eight horses when we were, when we were down at the farm um, where we were before. Um, we've got 30 riding still now. Uh, we had 40 at the start of the season. We've sold a few, a couple go wrong, but, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's progressed really well, to be honest. So Jenny, you're the other half of G&T Racing, and uh, as a team it's going pretty well this year. Yeah, we've had a really good start to the season. Um, I'm not sure if we're at the same amount of winners as we were last year, but we seem to be heading the right way anyway. And you, you yourself, you're six times champion lady rider in point to point sphere, and currently well ahead this year. Um, in terms of numbers for you this year, how does that normally compare? Um, I think I'm, you know, I'm well on target. I think my dad always said if you could ride 10 winners in a season, you, you, you know, you've had a good year sort of thing. And I'm at 11 already and you know, we're only in February. So you know, we've got plenty of horses to run at home. And between me and Jack, you know, we've got plenty of nice horses to ride. So you mentioned your brother, Jack, he's 
obviously an, an integral part. It's not just you and Tom. He's really integral to his team here, isn't he? Oh, very much so. I mean, um, Jack's been with us a few years now, and he's you know he's he's, he's really good with the young horses. Um, does all the breaking in, and you know starts the young horses off basically. And I'd really like it if he could ride more of them in races, but because he's so tall, you know his weight isn't good. So. We'd quite like it if the weights went up a bit for, mm. for four-year-olds because they are quite low. I mean, we've got affiliates running next week. She's carrying 10 stone. I mean, I'll probably have to miss a few meals to, to do that <laughs> myself, you know, and I'm not that big. But, um, no, yeah, he's a, he's a massive part of the team now and, we, you know, he's, he's very good. Jack, part of the G&T racing team here, things are going great for you guys this season. How's it going for you personally? Yeah, it's going really well. Um, I've had eight winners this season, uh, puts me about second in the national championship and um, that's been an aim the sort of last 12 months or so for me to maybe try and win this. It's the sort of next step in my career to try and go for a senior national men's championship and it might not happen this year but um, I'm getting closer so fingers crossed that one day it will happen. It must be quite exciting to be part of a, a young ambitious team who are effectively the reigning title holders in both divisions. Yeah definitely. Um, you know. I, since I've started riding, Jean has always been champion. and um, No family pressure or anything? No, 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 no. family <laughs> pressure, not from mum, dad, Bridge, Jean. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 there's plenty of pressure on my shoulders. But um, no, it's nice as well that when I started here, it was, it was very little and we probably had sort of 12 horses and we've sort of got to around 40 with, two, with a new barn. And no, it's nice. It's good. And you've got some really exciting young horses and you seem to really enjoy that, being part of that process, bringing those on. Yeah, massively. That's That's what I love to do really um breaking in the three-year-olds and getting them going and schooling them all up and I know Gina doesn't really like it so it's <laughs> nice that she just leaves me alone and I, I get on with doing it and, and of the, the more established horses um you and Gina came across Fume Duduri I believe <laughs> yeah he um he was a bit of luck really we uh we we managed to be in the right place at the right time and um he was at Doncaster Sales and he was going through for no money and we took a chance on him and, and now it's paid off. He's, he's free from free this year. He's unbeaten over fences, unbeaten pointing. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't think he's stopped winning yet anyway. Just a to touch on your team so far. I mean, one of the, the stars has been Calabaloo. Uh, she's flying for you this year. Two, yeah. two wins at Annex so far. Yeah, she, the Annex suits her really well. It's a proper staying track and that's what she's all about is stamina. Um, she's not a flashy horse, and um, but she, she's going better at the end of a race than she is anywhere else. Um, touch wood, she jumps accurately and neatly. And yeah, she, I was really impressed with her at Cheltenham last year. I think we've got to improve an awful lot to go and win a Fox Hunter, but she's entitled to go and take her chance. She seems to go well around there. She ran well in the intermediate final a few years ago. Um, sort of, we, you always buy a young horse like her in the hope that they'll, they'll, they'll progress into, you know, into a Fox Hunter horse, which you know, she, she has, and I think, you know, she's every right to be there. She's probably not going to be good enough, but she goes well at the track. She jumps well, and she stays really well. Mm. So, you know, we, we've, we, you know, we're, we're halfway there anyway. So. What's she like to deal with? Um, not the easiest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, she, she, uh, typical mare, she's a lot better than she was. She can be very awkward, but she makes up for it with the race course, so we forgive her. And stamina is very much a forte for her, so if it was a testing fox hunter, it would play to her strengths. Absolutely, yeah. Soft ground and a, and a stamina test. You know, as, as long as I can lay up early on, I think you know, she should have a good chance because she should stay going well. You know, she, 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 she stays really well. So you know, as long as I can stay in touch, I'm, I'm still in touch with the top of the hill, you know, she should have every chance. And in terms of staying test at the Cheltenham Festival, you know all about those having won on Doomsday Book a few years ago. Yeah, definitely the highlight of my career, um, best day of my life. I always say, you know, it was a, it was a great day, and I'm very grateful to to Stuart Edmonds for giving me the ride and the owner Jim Humberstone. You know. What's it like having your first festival winner? Um, I, don't, I don't really know how to describe it. Like, it's just it's what you dream of. Like, it's, it's all you, you know when you when you start out it's, to get a ride there is it's just great, but to actually ride a winner is just unbelievable. And I don't expect I'll ever do it again, but <laughs> I'll have a go. Well, thank you very much indeed for watching this week's show. It's the last from This Racing Life of this series. So thank you very much for watching each and every week. We will see you again with more This Racing Life very soon. <laughs>